Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Sonic Mania Plus modding tutorials. This episode will show you how to extract the files from the game so that you can take a look inside and edit them as you wish. For now, I'm just going to go over how to extract those files rather than how to edit them. Those tutorials will be in later episodes. As well, this episode will also show you how to use the data folder mode that Sonic Mania supports. Data folder mode will load the files from the extraction you'll make so that you can make quick and easy edits into the files and see them in the game. So to start, you'll need to go to my GitHub link in the description to a fork of iKey's RSDK v5 extractor. This version of the extractor has support for the plus update and was made through the efforts of a few modders like me, Random Talking Bush, and more. As of recently, it has support for every single file in the data file except for one use unused sound effect. You'll need to download this first zip file here called RSDK v5 extract plus. When that's done, you can go ahead and open it up, copy the folder inside, and move it over to your Sonic Mania folder. I showed you how to get to that folder in the previous episode, but as a reminder, it's most likely in your default Steam Downloads folder. I'd recommend making a new folder inside called Tools, so that your Mania folder can stay organized and it'll come in handy for future episodes. So open up that Tools folder, paste in the extractor, open up that folder, and in another window, open up the Sonic Mania folder again. Find the file called data.rsdk. This file holds all the assets and media that Mania uses. Once you find it, drag it over the data dot, or the rsdk v5 extract file. A command line window will pop up and it will automatically extract every file from the game. The speed that it extracts at will depend on the power of your PC, but overall it's pretty quick. Just give it a minute. So once that's done, it'll close itself. Now you'll see two new folders in your Mania folder, data and unknown. The unknown folder only has that single unused sound effect and it can't be fixed until we figure out what its name is. The data folder, however, holds every extracted file from the game. So now you can open that up and see all the files that the game loads. The game folder holds the game config file, which manages loads of stuff like stage order, global sound effect names, and more. There's also an unused RSDK config file meant for the devs. Images holds two images th that the game uses, which are a piracy warning and the knuckles and knuck knuckles mode ending. Mes meshes holds all the models. Music has all the AUG files for music. If you can't play the music files, that probably means you don't have a compatible media player for AUGs, so I recommend VLC Media Player. Objects has a variety of object files and their uses vary. Palettes has all the Encore mode palette files. Shaders has all the different shader files that, the, that make the game look different. Sound effects has all the different sound effects, whether they be on a global or stage basis. Sprites has all the GIF files for stages, menus, players, or any other sprite in the game.
Stages has all the bin files for every stage and menu in the game along with their tiles. So you can see the tiles. There's 1,024 tiles for every single stage. And you can see the axe and two different config files. Strings has all the text documents for all the new credits or any languages varying strings in the game. Finally, videos has every file, video file that the game needs. You'll notice that they just don't have any audio, and that's because the audio is actually in the music folder and the game plays both at the same time. There's a second way to extract the data file as well. My good friend and modder, Rubber Ducky Cooley, has a general purpose editor for the Retro Engine games, and one of the functions is extracting any data file. So if you'd like to use this instead, you can go ahead and download it, and I'll leave a link in the description, of course. You can go ahead, open that up, copy everything. I'm gonna make another folder in the tools folder that you made earlier. Open that up, paste everything inside. You can go ahead and fire up Retro Red. And now go to Engine, RSDK Unpacker, select Data File. Down here at the bottom, make sure you pick RSDK V5 data, data files. Go to your Sonic Mania folder and select the data.rsdk. It might take a bit for it to load. When that's done, you can hit Extract. RetroEd also has functionality to pack a data file there at the bottom, but the mod loader works better for loading mods than providing a full data file. Now that you know how to extract the data file and what all of these folders are, I can show you how to use the data folder mode. Data folder mode will use this newly extracted folder so that you can load edited files easily without testing them in mod folders. It's really simple to start using this method. Go back to the Sonic Mania folder and find that data.rsdk file again. And rename it to anything else. I wouldn't recommend deleting it as you need to download the whole thing again from Steam if you mess anything up. Data folder mode now works, so you can go ahead and boot up Mania. There at the top, you can see that data folder mode is now on. So to show an example, I'm going to swap the music files for Green Hill. So you can hear that was different, along with Act 2. So now you know for sure that data folder mode is working. And that's all I have for this episode of Sonic Mania Plus Monic Tutorials. In the next episode, I will teach you how to use the secret dev menu that you can see here on the screen, and how to use it along with the hidden settings and features it has. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked this tutorial, please make sure to leave a like, and if you want more in the future, please subscribe. See you next time.